Good day, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lance Clark. Today we're going to be talking about the road. Alright, let's go. Twos and all the fun, different, unique thing, ways that you can use them and why they're just awesome and you should probably pick up some of them for your camera bag 100%. Now, first off, the most like straightforward, simple use case for it is a lav mic. You just clip it onto the person, their jacket, their sweater, whatever, inside a suit pocket, doesn't matter, clip this onto them, capture lavalier quality audio, Bob's your uncle. Now the other thing that you could do with this to make it even more like of a lav kind of setup is you can actually buy like a proper corded lavalier mic, plug it into one of these, then they just clip this onto their belt. This becomes their little belt transceiver thingamajig and then you have a higher quality possibly depending on how much money you spend microphone as their lav mic. Now these I think are very good quality microphones but if you're a huge audiophile you could definitely definitely dish out a little bit of extra and get yourself like a higher quality lav mic. This is just the Rode, um, I think it's like $180, this is just the Rode one. But you could get some that are like four or $500 for just a lav mic and have a lot higher quality of audio. So that's totally an option, that is up to you. I don't necessarily think that it's necessary, but I will say that these things, as little of a square that they are, it does show up a lot if you like clip it on somewhere <laughs> like if uh, for weddings that's probably the biggest example for a wedding if you have this clipped on to like the brooms the brooms wow the grooms jacket suit jacket or whatever like you're probably gonna see this especially if you have a little windscreen on it's like this little fuzzy pom-pom it's gonna stand out quite a bit so getting something that's a little bit more sleek and uh, discreet is awfully helpful, that's for sure. Now the benefit of the Rode Wireless Go 2s is obviously that you actually have two microphones instead of just the one microphone. So in that case of having a um, like a bride and groom, you could actually just put one on the bride and one on the groom, where before with the Rode Wireless Go 1s, you actually had to buy a whole other set of these, like, the transceiver and microphone so you would have two of these and then they came out with all these things that you could buy to attach to your camera and all this stuff in like a an audio splitter so that you could like feed it into your camera all this complicatedness which was ridiculous honestly <laughs> so really happy that there's two of these uh, little transceiver thingy microphones on this so that's the most obvious one boom Bob's your uncle Secondly, and the one that I probably use the most, is I will actually take a other microphone, this is the Rode Video Micro, Video Mic Pro thing, and then I'll actually just plug in one of these microphones into this receiver, very similar like you would do a lavalier mic, and now I have a portable, like high quality, like shotgun mic that I could put anywhere I want it to. And what I'll actually do is I'll actually boom this. So if I'm doing interviews and it's only like a single person, or even if it's a group of people sometimes. But if I'm doing interviews with a single person, I will actually have this boomed over them, and then I will just have this attached to it, and boom, now I got wireless hands-free audio, which I don't need like a sound engineer or nothing for, nor do I need a uh, field recorder to plug in that microphone into, so it's like, I don't have to like match up the audio later on, which is fantastic. With that being said, field recording, that is another awesome use case of these little microphones. With the Rode Wireless Go 2s, they actually have an internal recorder, which you can record seven hours of uncompressed audio onto each of these. So this, seven hours of uncompressed, this, seven hours of uncompressed audio, which is actually what I'm doing currently. This is the little block that you would normally stick onto your camera, and currently, my camera audio is not recording nothing. <laughs> so I'm literally just using this because it records internally. And so now, A, you have backup audio, so if you are recording into your camera, something happens to your camera audio, you can actually have this as your backup, so now you have doubled up audio, which is a godsend, it's, it's like the same thing of having like your file, like two memory cards on your camera kind of thing. Now the other really cool thing about this is that I could actually do like a podcast whole interview thing just using these and if I had no plans to record it with my camera because I can use these independently of a camera anything that you can think of interview wise or any type of audio sampling 
that you don't want to like pull your camera out, plug this in, roll the camera, and then record audio, and then have these like random like video files that are nothing, which I've done before, by the way. You could literally just take this and just record the audio of whatever you want. So podcast, give this to one person, have this on another person, clip it onto like a little table stand or whatever, and boom, now you have a podcast set up that you can mobilely use, and it is the size of these three little cubes, and that's it, which is awesome. So, and then another one, and so I used to have the um, H4N Zoom field recorder, and I got it so that I could sample audio when I was going to like a site or something, like a babbling brook, blah, blah, blah. Wind ruffling, bristling, whistling through trees, leaves and things, but now I can just use this. So, like this multi-purpose thing, is so happy to my like semi-minimalistic, like very functional heart where I can just use this one system to do like the job of like 10 systems, which is dope. That makes me very happy. Now the other thing with the fact that these things can record their own separate audio and that you have two of them is that if you wanted to be very creative and have your left and right channels of your audio be separate and be very different when actually recording. Now this is something big that the ASMR community does that I've noticed is that they'll actually have two microphones uh, pointed at whatever they're ASMRing so it mimics the human ear so it's like you have two ways of listening so we're going to give you two sources of audio is the like thoughts behind it but you can do the same kind of thing with this. So. If you're recording with both of them, if I'm just like looking forwards, it's gonna sound like as normal. But if I turn my head towards one microphone, this one will be considerably louder than this one. And then if I like turn my head this way and do it like that, now we're creating kind of like a uh, surround sound kind of system, which is dope. And that's actually like a really creative thing that you can do with the audio if you choose to. A really good example of that is the movie Baby Driver. I guess if you listen, I've never actually done this, but if you listen to the movie Baby Driver in headphones, every time Baby takes out one headphone, the audio switches and goes into one of your earbuds, not both of them anymore. So it actually like cuts this one out when Baby takes his headphone out, which is just like such a unique creative way of doing something like that. There's tons of other use cases for that kind of thing, like if there's an explosion in your narrative way out into the distance of your action movie, way out in the distance, you could have it just on one channel, like the left channel, and that's it, to kind of symbolize that it's like way out in the distance. So, lots of different creative uses that you could actually get for using two microphones and then syncing the audio on the left and right channels later on, which is awesome, super, super cool. Um, there's probably like 10,000 other ways that you could actually use this. Oh, the really cool way that I completely forgot is now with these is that you could actually use USB-C to plug them into different things. So you can plug it into your computer and do all of like use this system as your like Zoom meeting call microphone just through your computer. So upgrade your like audio quality. My light just died. <laughs> That's fun. Anyways, you can upgrade your audio quality with uh, with like your Zoom meetings by plugging these in like USB-C kind of thing. Or you can even plug it into your phone now um, with like the USB-C. This is an iPhone. So USB-C to lightning cable. You could plug it in and then you can like record either just like high quality audio on your smartphone or, you know, like record it just to have it, you know, if you're doing like a vlog or something and you don't have like a big fancy camera, you can get high quality audio still out of just your phone, which is dope. Super cool. Love that fact that you can like plug it into multiple different devices now. So that's really cool. Anyways, like I said, tons and tons and tons of other ways that I'm assuming that you could do this. Um, that you could actually use these microphones for. So if you have any of those thoughts of like the use cases that you could do this that I haven't mentioned, leave a comment down below. Let's start the little community conversation things. If you're interested, I don't have very many followers, so I don't really expect lots of comments anyways. But anyways, if you see this video, comment something that maybe I could use later on that you use because I'm open to any of the suggestions that y'all may have. 
If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, do the things people tell you to do. If you didn't like this video, don't do any of it, and I don't care. See what I care. See what I care. Anyways, peace out. It's April, and we're still getting snow here in Canada, so like, hopefully going outside will be a thing soon. I mean, it's COVID anyway, so can't do much, but still, sunshine. It's important. You need it from a heart. Peace out. So do you record even if the receiver is turned off? Testing one, two, testing. Are you recording?